<laughs> I like to introduce my next comic right now. He's, uh, I had trouble writing his introduction, and he's a good friend of mine. And he's worked really hard to put the, the production together tonight. Um, he has an act that you won't forget anytime soon. A really funny guy, Jim Lee. wanted me to just run the camera, you know, since that's what most agents are going for. Um, but I figured that would be just too stereotypical. But uh, Dave, your dry cleaning was done about an hour ago. <laughs> you can come get this later. Um, and, uh, many of you may not know this, but uh, photography is the number one cause of agents having small eyes. That's because I was doing this. <laughs> no, but Dave's a great guy, and um, you know, I, I really appreciate it bringing me out here. And he even bought me dinner before the show. Um, he didn't tell me it would be hospital food, but <laughs> that's cool. Um, but it got me thinking, though, what is worse than hospital food? And that's probably airline food, because when you think about it, you've actually paid for that privilege to eat that food, but when in a, you're in a hospital, it's usually covered by Medicare. <laughs> and um, you'd think that maybe they could sneak maybe a T-bone into your plan, you know, like maybe for a $10 copay, you get, I don't know, Sizzler, or maybe $20 more, you get Outback, or, you know, like Vegas, you know. They could make it kind of like that generic, non-generic drug thing, you know. Um, and I've heard that uh, hospital food is, is kind of bland, so I, I snuck a few condiments in for everybody, so you can just kind of pass these around. <laughs> Help yourself, I got more in the other pocket. So. <laughs> and um, Dave was nice enough to um, get us all commemorative t shirts for this event, but as you can see, I'm not wearing mine. Basically, the slit in the back kept showing my butt crack. So. <laughs> It got me thinking, though, how come uh, hospital gowns are either light blue or white, you know? Firstly, ma'am, I think you'd look great in a leopard print, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> uh, the last time I was in a hospital, I think, was for my addiction. Yeah, I was just drinking way too much coffee, man. You know, they wheeled me into emergency and hooked me right up to a decaf IV drip. I think I was getting about 50 cc's of grande every half hour. Um, but the worst thing about the addiction was, um, you know, I started panhandling outside of Starbucks, you know, spare frappuccino, spare frappuccino, you know. And you know it gets bad because, you know, I, I was like shooting up half and half just for kids. Um, and you know you really hit rock bottom when you start freebasing coffee grounds. <laughs> really bad. Um, it cost me my job, too, because my employer said, you were just doing way too much work. <laughs> And it really sucked being unemployed because, you know, basically that was my free supply of coffee every day, you know. I had to go into my stash that was under my bed. I kept it in a little Folgers can. <laughs> um, sorry, I just wrote this like a week ago, so I'm trying to remember all my lines. Uh, like, yeah. um, actually, I, uh, I tried several things to kick the addiction. Um, I even checked myself into Juan Valdez House of Rehab. But uh, that didn't work. There were just too many distractions there. Um, turns out the nurses were also too dark and full-bodied. <laughs> and aromatic, for that matter. <laughs> Sadly, the uh, Maxwell House was just chock full of nuts, so I couldn't go there either. Um, I did try this thing called the uh, um, coffee chewing tobacco, but uh, I found that didn't work either because I kept uh, drinking right back out of the spit cup. <laughs> Is I am getting better. I am using this uh, thing called the coffee patch. So it's actually a used filter that I slapped on my arm. So it seems to be working. Yeah. Uh, I really love this decor. I mean, it, it brings back a lot of childhood memories for me. Um, mostly bad, but you know, five years of therapy between friends. Yeah. <laughs> But sometimes I do wish I was a kid again. You know, back then all you have to do is a like, kick back in your Superman underwear and watch cartoons all day. I mean, that's kind of what I do now. <laughs> but back then everything was so innocent. You know, back then words like baby Ruth and sugar daddy actually meant candy. You know? um, but I'm a firm believer that children should learn responsibility at an early age. So I thought that maybe they should do like The Apprentice for Kids. You know, you can have like uh, Donald Trump addressing Girl Scout Troop 101, you know, Jessica, 
your cookie sales were down. <laughs> I think I know the reason why. In business, it's location, location, location. <laughs> and to set up in front of a 99 cent store, what a big mistake. <laughs> I did enjoy when you stiffed that lady for a penny. And then earned you some brownie points. Yeah, brownie points, that's funny. But no, stop crying. <laughs> because if you did not go where the money was, you're fired. Take your Scooby-Doo backpack and get out of my office. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure if you're walking, but you know, you can't do the Donald yet. Um, I, uh, speaking of jobs, though, I've had probably the two most hated jobs in all the free world. I have actually been a telemarketer and a customer service rep at a cable station. And just between us folks, you know, the reason why the service is so bad in cable TV is because well, have the time for watching TV. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I'd even go into work on my days off just so I could watch more TV. You know? um, and I worked with this um, one guy um, who had no arms, uh, I'm being really serious here. And uh, one day, to get an angry subscriber on the phone, he just told him, I have no arms. You know? It's like, how can you argue with a guy with no arms? You know, kind of like, you know, visiting WrestleMania is kind of insignificant at that point. <laughs> Uh, and I remember the one time I was in the lobby and uh, James Duhon of Star Trek fame comes into our lobby and he says he wants to set up cable. And I was like, dude, you're Scotty. Do it yourself. <laughs> Why did he have to come over there? You know? Why didn't he just you know, beam himself over? I, I just couldn't understand that. Um, I also worked with this girl who wore black every single day. I swear to God, every single day. It made me wonder, when she opens up her closet, that must be like a total eclipse of the sun or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> recently, I, I took a job uh, teaching traffic school. Yeah, I know, you can laugh. The Asian teaching traffic school. That's like, I don't know, Stallone teaching Shakespeare or something. You know? And my opening line to the class was, you know, I was coming here so often, they just figured they'd make me the teacher. <laughs> but, uh, in some ways, I am kind of stereotypical, because when they told me this was for the City of Hope, I actually tried to find it on MapQuest. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew it was in Duarte? <laughs> um, but as a lot of you know, traffic school is kind of boring, so to kind of spice things up, I, I would let the one student leave early if they gave me a really good excuse for why they were there. So uh, this one lady like, raises her hand and she goes, I'm here to meet a nice, handsome, single Chinese man. <laughs> so I was like, Mom, please, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> uh, I love my mom, but sometimes, you know, um, speaking English to her is really frustrating because she took everything really literally. Like if you said, hold on, Mom, Mom would be like, hold on, hold on to what? You know? And recently I told her I was doing stand-up comedy, and she was like, how are you standing up funny? <laughs> if they don't pay you, you sit down. <laughs> um, but I do remember this one time, she came home with six cans of dog food, and this normally wouldn't be strange, but we didn't have a dog at that time. You know, we'd eaten them the day before. <laughs> uh, just kidding, just kidding. You're born to cats, they're lowering carbs. <laughs> Chicken, rice with beef, uh, rice yeah. and lamb. <laughs> I thought I was reading like the menu off a uh, Pan Express or something. Um, I recently we were out shopping and she noticed the Virgin Mega Store. Okay, and she was like, "Did you know such a place?" And I was like, "Sadly, Mom, up until about a year ago, I was part of their inventory. Luckily, <laughs> I got marked down." <laughs> but the moral of the story is that if you see my mom anywhere on the street, do not ask her about the vagina monologues. <laughs> I've been here a really long time. So, and that's my time. So thanks, Dave. And <laughs>